Hello again with a new case. Today's case has a simple and quick teaching point. Uh, the case is mainly directed to residents in radiology, in particular those who are just starting. If you did not see this before, it might be something that could confuse you during your readouts or on-call. As we go along, I'll uh, explain a few basics to make this more interesting to uh, those uh, who are not in radiology, in particular students and interns. So you're looking at a CT scan of the chest. You're looking at the patient from his feet, and that's why the labeling is as you see, anterior, posterior, right and left. The study is with intravenous contrast, and the reason you give contrast is to see bright structures, in particular those that are vascular. So here is your pulmonary artery, here is your ascending aorta, and that's your descending aorta. The different colors on a CT scan are called densities. Uh, we started with the very bright density within the vessels because we gave intravenous contrast. Another example of a density is that of the very white bones, such as you see here, this is a rib soft tissues such as the muscles and the chest wall have a uh, different grayish color subcutaneous fat is darker in comparison to the muscles but not as dark as air as you can see air in the lung is very dark it's as dark as air outside the patient as we scroll from above below you could follow these structures. Concentrate on the pulmonary artery. This is the pulmonary trunk, and this is the right pulmonary artery, and that's the left pulmonary artery at a bifurcation. Now, this is what catches your attention as a junior radiology resident if you see it for the first time. You see this dark spot here within the pulmonary artery. There's another dark spot here as well. And you know that these are air density. So you're totally concerned about having air within the pulmonary artery. Not only that, if you scroll the way down, you're looking at the heart. And to simplify things for students, this is the right side of the heart so this is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle with the interventricular septum in between and if you look carefully you see another air bubble within the right ventricle as well one thing that's understandable is that air goes to the higher areas the non-dependent areas, since the patient is lying on his back right so if you look at the air bubble here it's in a non-dependent area Another feature is that since it's gas and fluid, so gaseous area with fluid area, it's expected to have a fluid level sometimes, especially if the air bubble is big. This is all fine and well, but if you're seeing this for the first time, let's say you're a junior radiology resident uh, doing your first night of on-call cases, what should you make out of this? Well, one thing you should do is not to panic and call this an air embolism. Let's explain more. It is normal to see occasionally a few air bubbles within the right-sided circulation. Why do you see that? It's because of many patients having IV cannulations. So the IV cannula that the patient has, whether it's inserted for injecting intravenous contrast or for other medical reasons, sometimes introduces a few air bubbles into the uh, vasculature. To clarify this a bit, if you insert an intravenous axis, an IV line, occasionally you might have air bubbles tracking into the veins. The veins would drain all the way back to the SVC, so this is your superior vena cava. The superior vena cava 
would then drain blood into the right atrium, which drains it into the right ventricle. And that's why you see a tiny air bubble here as well. The right ventricle pushes blood into the pulmonary artery, which could contain a few air bubbles, which is normal. So a few tiny air bubbles, secondary to inserting an IV axis, is not an unusual thing. This is not an air embolism. It is a finding to ignore. To summarize what we talked about, first, for the junior radiology resident, seeing a few tiny air bubbles within the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle is not unusual. It's something that you might encounter occasionally, and it's a finding to ignore. This is not an air embolism. The reason is the IV axis. To summarize the points for the uh, students and interns, the patient in a CT scan lies on his back here, so this is posterior. You're looking at the patient from the feet. This is anterior and this is right and that's left. You have different colors on a CT scan which we call densities. The bright ones, for example, would be bone and contrast. Less bright would be that of soft tissue. Less bright would be subcutaneous fat and very dark would be air. As a student, you also learned a bit of uh, interesting anatomy, basic stuff, but uh, nice to see on a CT scan, which is the pulmonary trunk, the right pulmonary artery, the left pulmonary artery, ascending aorta, descending aorta in cross section. Thanks for watching and see you with more cases later.